start from the beginning. So, yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, like I said, my name's Aaron Watson. Uh, I work for the Environment Agency as a as an analysis and reporting officer. I've got a slide that covers some of my background, um, and I'm giving this talk um, sort of uh, to promote Riverfly. Really, um, I don't work at the Riverfly partnership, but I, I do mention who does, and uh, I've. I'm sort of involved with it through the environment agency, but I absolutely love it. So Alex said, would I give this talk after I was at a training event, becoming a trainer? And uh, and I thought, yeah, it'd be a great idea to promote it. So let me, um, so the history behind the Riverfly partnership goes back quite a long time. It, you know, back to the 1970s where they started some of the, the early recording schemes, people like Ian Wallace, um, who wrote the Caddis, uh, Case Caddis Fly book. And, um, and other people started that sort of work. And then by the, the 1980s, Cyril Bennett, who helped sort of do some of the, um, the early uh, work, including some of the, the beautiful images that came with some of the earlier sort of um, identification sheets. And then by sort of the, you know, the mid 1980s onwards, um, Steve Brooks, who's the chairman of Riverfly, had, had sort of um, was sort of heavily involved. And, um, and it sort of stayed at the Natural History M Museum all the way up to when um, Steve retired. And, uh, and even now, actually, when we, we tend to have Riverfly Partnership conferences, they, they are sort of usually made um, at the, the Natural History Museum or events tend to be there. So what is the Riverfly Partnership? I'm going to cover quite a lot of different aspects of it throughout the talk. So it might be sort of I'm mentioning one thing and you're asking, no, I don't know what he means. So it's a bit jumbled in a way but the riverfly partnership is a is an organization which is hosted by the freshwater biological association which is um if you've not heard of it before it's based at windermere it used to um, produce scientific publications now it's more involved in education conservation they um, conserve pearl mussels and um, they also publish books and because the Riverfly Partnership is, is sort of been funded from a grant in the beginning, and then um, it's actually been funded by the EA for quite a long time, it needs to be hosted by someone else. So um, at the minute, it's with the Freshwater Biological Association. So you'll see that when you go on the website, they sort of run together. Two, there's two people who officially work at Riverfly. So Alex and Trini, um, they're both uh, Riverfly coordinators. Uh, and between them, they sort of, um, you know, work, put people in touch with the right groups, um, help coordinate um, sites, ask, answer questions, all sorts of different things. And then on top of that, there's an advisory board, which I, I sit on, um, along with many other people from different organisations that I mentioned in, in the partners page. Uh, and that sort of group is there to help sort of um, discuss, you know, how riverflies might build and grow. Um, and it's a really exciting time at the minute because there's a lot of new stuff that's just been sort of developed and being launched, which I'll cover later on. Um, so the, the EA staff um, involved in it, this, so this is my sort of part, is that we, the way that Riverfly works is, is that when you set up a new site, um, the operational instruction or, or the guidance suggests that you get in touch with your local EA ecology contact and, and they can sort of advise on, on maybe where you might want to put a site. Um, or and well, sorry, and or they can also recommend um, a score for that site. So a score is basically this special number that you're going to use, and then when you go and do your invertebrate sampling and you total your scores, you're looking to see if the score that you've got from your river matches this trigger score that we're going to discuss a bit more. And the ecology contacts are there to sort of to help um, advise and, and sort of report back on that. And there's there's a, about 28 of those across the country. So it's been like I said, it's been been running for quite a long time. The project itself has been running for well over a decade. And, um, you know, you, you've seen the, the timeline earlier, if not officially longer. But as far as I'm aware, we've been collecting uh, um, data on the database for, for well over a decade now, which is great. So the database on the website is currently um, down while they're just fixing the new website which looks great and um, when that's back up you'll be able to you control through all of the data if you want to and have a look at some of the rivers that you might fish on so the core aims of riverfly taken from the website is um is all these different points here which you know cover the sort of the drivers behind the work that riverfly does um you know improving conservation status and raising public and strategic awareness 
um, along with many other things. And it, but it's really good that these are clear objectives of what Riverfly um, wants to do. And sort of that that helps us. Um, well, helps us. I say it helps Riverflies and obviously our advisory board sort of understand. You know, what are the goals of, of uh, Riverflies as a project? So who am I? A little bit late in there about who I am instead of at the beginning, but I felt it was fitting to introduce Riverflies, then say who I am. So I'm an analysis and reporting officer. My main role is um, to sort of investigate, uh, you know, rivers and I do quite a lot of different things. I analyse aquatic invertebrates in a lab. Um, I sort of uh, do a bit of hydroacoustics. Um, involved in invasive species, all sorts of different things. But my voluntary role is to, to help coordinate those sort of 28 ecology contracts across the, uh, the, the, the 40 plus areas of the Environment Agency. So um, we the people who volunteer to do it fit it into their spare time. And we sort of liaise with different groups and the groups are set out in, in what's called a hub. So each of the the river flies groups around the country, there's lots and lots and lots of them. There's over 3,500 volunteers plus. Um, they sit into a, what, a hub, and then that hub coordinator coordinates with the ecology contacts at the Environment Agency, and then the, the volunteers coordinate with the hub coordinator. So it's all really structured, and if you go on the river flies website, it does actually set out exactly what those roles are and what they do. And, and that structure works really well because then the hub coordinator can put the information onto the website so they're all instead of everybody doing it and maybe there might be some anglers where you know they just quite happily collect the data but don't want to do anything to do with the computer so you know that's what the hub is set up to do um, my background's in entomology i'm very passionate about entomology i've got into uh fishing I took up fly fishing two years ago now and um did a bit of course fishing growing up do sea fishing as well so i've sort of gone the other way i've started in entomology and then got into fishing whereas a lot of anglers i speak to especially fly fishermen or fly fish people that that get into you know they're into fishing and then they learn the insects but it's quite easy for me to do it the other way around um so i've trained to become a river flies trainer as well actually to do in my spare time which because I just love river flies that much, I, I just wanted to help train people. So I'm one of um, three trainers in the Northwest, but there's trainers all across the country and there's quite a few people that travel around doing that. And um, I've already mentioned that I try and fly fish when I get spare five minutes, if I'm not giving talks to people or, <laughs> or doing other things. Um, so why river flies? So when we talk about river flies, you know, stone flies, may flies, caddis flies, they're the main ones. But we do include some of the other in, invertebrates that, that fish eat. Well, I say fish that, that you know, um, that mainly sort of, um, you know, trout or grayling eat. Because this is what it was all focused around, really. The origin of the project was on chalk streams and it was for fly fishing on chalk streams. So it was focusing on sort of some of the aquatic insects that those fish eat. But actually, when you start to look at, you know, some of the fish that are stocked in coarse fisheries uh, and elsewhere, um, you know, they have very sort of similar diets in a way of what they eat, from what I've read anyway, through the research. But really, they all sort of go together, I think, really. So, you know, insects like happy places to live, fish like eating insects, and anglers like fishing. So together, you know, they create a happy environment, which means more fish for food, and obviously means more fish for fishing, you know, which we all want. So that was the sort of, the idea was to push river flies to anglers really, to, to fly um, fishermen and sort of get them doing it because then, you know, they're out fishing, they want to know what the fish are eating. And this is what I tell people when I speak to anglers, you know, I always say, if you know what the fish are eating, then you know what to set your flies. And then if you know what to set your flies, hopefully you'll get a better catch. So that's one of the, the benefits. And then, you know, if, you, if you're getting that information from what invertebrates are out there already, then you can just write that down and submit it for a, for a different reason. So it's given an indication of pollution. And, and that's what River Flies does. It's a, it's a real good indicator of organic pollution. So it all started with sort of people studying insects really. And, and you know, we know that certain fish eat certain insects and they might eat certain insects at times of the year. And we know that certain insects um, uh, become flying insects at certain times of the year or they're nymphs at certain times of the year. So you can start to really kind of build up a good understanding of what, what you'd be looking for, what, what you're sort of interested in recording. And on top of that, you sort of start to think about, you know, 
are any of these insects sort of um, uh, sensitive to certain things? You know, are they sensitive to, to temperature or, um, you know, phosphate or what, whatever it is? And, and what happened is, is people developed techniques for different reasons. So the Biological Monitoring Working Party, here you can see a definition from, um, from Wikipedia, and this was set up as the BMWP scoring system. And what they did is they took, you know, lots of different aquatic insects that people had heavily studied, and they sort of worked out that they were some certain groups or certain um, families, we call them, uh, are real good indicators of certain different changes. And from that, the, the BMWP scoring system was, was developed. And, you know, the Environment Agency, SEPA, um, National Resource Wales all started using, you know, indicators like this as, as uh, indicator systems like this to sort of help understand the pressures that are going on in rivers. From that, there's a number of other indices that were developed on top of that. So an indices is a, is a, um, a list of sort of numbers and um, that are linked to different um, creatures. And then those numbers totaled up give us an indicate an, an indication of some sort of range. And, and so there was a flow method developed um, by some colleagues in the Environment Agency and some other people. Um, and, and they developed so you can look at invertebrates and see how they are good indicators of flow. You can look at in, invertebrates who are good indicators of, of sediment. Um, you know, there's all these different things that they respond to. And so it was, I think it was well, not quite easy, but it was a real good way to say, oh, okay, well, we could probably change this um, high level sort of system into something that anybody could do. You just go on a, um, a day's training course, um, learn how to identify some real easy sort of groups of invertebrates and go out where you kick sampling net and do a sample. And that's how sort of river flies was sort of developed. It was developed off the back of some of, of some of these other indices because we already knew that certain groups are real good indicators. So stoneflies, you know, I always see them as sort of the one of the highest sort of indicators, you know, um, those real fast flowing, um, high dissolved oxygen, you know, clean rivers. Some stoneflies, certain stoneflies, you'll only get, you know, in the north of Yorkshire or, um, or in Scotland, where they need lots and lots of fast flowing dissolved oxygen. And then there's, you know, there's certain types of caddis fly that just prefer really clean, um, you know, really clean sort of water. So if you're not, if you're not getting them and they're meant to be there, um, you know, you know that there's something maybe wrong with the water. And, and this goes uh, along with some of the certain mayflies. So um, the blue winged olive is, is a common one that a lot of people talk about. So the blue winged olive is, is, a, is, a, is an indicator of, of good quality. And, the, you know, um, they get really excited in, in Manchester area on the air well, um, if you speak to some of the chaps in Mersey Rovers Trust, because they're finally seeing the, the return of the blue winged olive after the Industrial Revolution. So, um, yeah, some of these groups are real good indicators of, of, of change. So, um, and, and then you can start to look at numbers as well. So you can start to look at, you know, lots and lots and lots of different insects is very good. You know, only a few of a few groups is is bad. So the idea is that if you if you're getting lots of different things in lots of amounts, um, you know that's really good. But if you're only getting one or two of certain things, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, why are they dying off? Uh, and that's what sort of um, the, these sort of um, indicators tell us. They tell us that certain things might die off in certain conditions. So yeah, you know, I've mentioned about dissolved oxygen. Um, but really, river flies is your sort of your broader um, organic pollution. So river flies is there to sort of pick up organic pollution. So it's there to pick up that organic pollution has entered the river and it's sort of probably eating up all the dissolved oxygen and, and changing the water chemistry. And then, you know, the, all the inverts start dying off. And that's an early indicator before the fish die. And there's been quite a lot of good examples of, of how that sort of um, picked up. Um, it's picked up the inverts dying before the fish has died and, and they've managed to get out and sort of um, investigate that beforehand. So the I've already touched upon the, uh, the Riverfly Partnership, but the actual scheme itself is called the Angler, uh, Anglers Riverfly Monitoring Initiative, so ARMY. And that's how it's re referred to, to a lot of people. It, it's sort of, 
army or you know a lot of people say yeah doing river fly or fly life but but the the acronym is army so if anyone says army we're not talking about the military we're talking about the 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 um the actual scheme that's named army so to get involved it's volunteers get trained up you've got to identify um uh, seven insect groups um sorry i think i might have miscounted there there's eight sorry and um you get a rough indicator of, of population size by counting up uh, different groups. So you're saying what you can see in a tray and you're counting them all up and then you're getting a rough, you're getting a rough idea of the population. So I've mentioned about trigger breaches already. So I'll go into a little bit more detail about, um, about trigger breaches. So once you've got, um, once you've got a score for your site, so it's been set up and you've got this sort of um, trigger score, it, it tells you that if you go and do your sampling and you get a score lower than that trigger score, then there's a problem. So, and then that's referred to as a trigger breach and that trigger breach, you know, you can report that. Now this is, this is separate from if you go down to the river and you see, you know, black gloop over the river going across the river before you've even done your, your, your river fly sample, you know, that that's a pollution incident and that, that's, that can be reported to the EA hotline. Um, immediately anyway you, you know the idea with river flies is it's picking up something really early so it's picking up that that organic pollution that's already sort of seeping in and and, and killing off the inverts because they're the most sensitive things before it kills the fish so you know if you do see something that's not right then you you're entitled as a member of the public to to ring up and report that as a pollution incident you know the, the if you smell something not right um, or you see something that's not right, you know, you just you can ring it in straight away before you even got round. And also, obviously, the risk assessment that you do as part of this, you probably won't advise anybody to get in the river if there was sort of black loop or, or a horrible smell of something because you don't want to put yourself at risk. So case studies, there's, um, you know, there's a number of case studies. I've just pulled, I've just pulled out a couple. Um, you can Google the, the, the Citizen Crane project. And, um, and this was a, you know, a really widespread project. I mean, you can see that the, the amount of volunteers, 50 volunteers over 11, um, 11 sampling sites, um, and then obviously deployed um, 2000 volunteers annually over 80 catchments. This is really good. And you can see there where they say about a score below a pre-agreed trigger level indicates that the river may be polluted and is reported to the EA National Environment Incident Line. So that's slightly changed uh, in a way. We sort of um, recommend that that the that you report your trigger breaches to your ecology contact. And um, unless it's out of hours, it can be report, you know, it should be reported to the hotline. But we're still sort of um, working out with Riverfly the best way to sort of respond to volunteers in the quickest way, really. Um, and that seems to be a bit quicker. Um, so focusing on another case study, I think I'm pretty sure the left picture is the, um, the downstream and the right is the upstream um, site. And you can see that, that by river fly monitoring, they were able to pick up um, uh, a problem at the, the downstream site and there was no problem at the upstream site. So they could pinpoint exactly where the problem was coming from. And the river fly volunteers called it in and, um, and the Riverfly Ecology contacts for this area responded and they managed to pick up a discharge, which they managed to find out where it's coming from and, and sort of stop it. So that was a real good example um, of, of how, you know, Riverfly should work in practice, really. Um, but there's been lots and lots of other benefits as well. So, I mean, these are all from the, the, the Riverfly's website. Um, if, if you like your scientific publications or there's been a few articles in magazines and all sorts of different things, you can have a look here and you can see that there's been lots of different stuff um, published by um, different people. I think the, the most recent article was at the, um, there was one with Mersey Rivers Trust, which was a really good article that they published. And um, there's also been a lot of um, master's projects. So master's students that go on after undergraduate level there's been a lot of um, projects by different master's students looking at different things and you can have a read here um, at some of those different projects. Absolutely fascinating. And it's really good um, that, you know, people want to engage like this and do different projects on things. So 
it's always good to hear that you know people are engaging beyond sort of what the scheme was set up for. So the recognised benefits, there's, I mean, there's definitely lots and lots of different benefits, you know, even we're starting to focus now on the benefits of mental health, but it can be as simple as just engaging with the local community. So, you know, you, you fish on a certain stretch of river and you want to sort of get more people involved in what might, you, you know, what the problems might be. Um, or it might be that you want to sort of just want to get more of the community involved in preserving the local fish population or, you know, just to get people involved with the importance of the river. But either way, it's sort of it's a way to engage people. And because it's um, not just uh, not just anglers that participate in this project now, it's sort of everybody from community groups through to schools to, to all sorts of stuff. It really kind of opens it up to sort of whatever the, the, the river fly group sort of ambition is really. Um, I've already mentioned it, it, its main purpose that it was des designed for, and obviously from the beginning, was it's an early warning, early warning sign for organic pollution. So, you know, that's what it was designed for. Um, but really, you know, it, you know, it started off with anglers doing it to sort of, um, yeah, to, to help protect their river. And, and I mean, from what, what I was told is when they originally designed it, it was to really kind of like point out to, you know, to the EA um, where there might be sort of, where, where, we're, where we're not checking really and not and maybe not doing our, our job but since then having spoken to people in Riverfly who've been involved with it so it's, it's changed so much now it's just it's grown and now it's sort of everything from getting people out through to um, you know having extra eyes and ears on the river through to you know understanding the insect populations better to to everything um, so it's just it's just a real um broad sort of program that that can be applied to all sorts of different things um and i've mentioned about reported incidents so yeah the, the the sort of once the trigger breach is reported i mean you know I, I will sort of say that we would love to respond to every single trigger breach if we could um but because we do it voluntarily in the ea um you know we, we do struggle to to be able to to go to every single trigger breach so it sort of um, was we're trying to work out a way and, and it might be that you know what I mentioned about a, a project that River Flies is being sort of um, part of and the Environment Agency is as well the Catchment Monitoring Cooperative it might be in the future that we find um, you know a better way to sort of uh, to be able to respond to, to more trigger breaches but regardless a lot of the people that are involved with it when it comes to reporting those trigger breaches are very passionate um about that and have been doing it for you know and some people i've spoken to have been doing it for the last um nearly a decade you know voluntarily as well and then on top of it it's worth mentioning about the volunteers as well so you know like i said there's over 3500 volunteers um that have, some of them have been doing it for decades and um you know it's those people that make a difference really and those people that are sort of watching these rivers change and watching uh you know the the rivers change very very quickly in some cases because of climate change and other reasons um so going back to new schemes and um so i've mentioned about army and obviously i said it's an exciting time in river flies which it is we've got two new schemes that um well, i say we river flies have got two new schemes that are being launched um so i i can't take any of the credit for this really um the, these schemes are uh, have been developed to sort of help with a growing need for for um, for different scores. So, Urban Riverfly was designed by um, by someone in the Environment Agency and, um, and and developed it to sort of be able to look at um, the urban rivers really. And and because the army was designed for chalk streams originally, it doesn't pick up urban rivers as well because you know you might not be getting all of this different types of um caddis fly and and some of the stone flies that you might expect to get on a chalk stream so this scheme was developed adding a few extra different creatures let's say so snails water beetles uh, worms and leeches were added in and they give extra scores and you'll you know they also give different indicators as well and just because it's called urban river fly doesn't mean it's just for urban rivers it's for rivers that might have problems ongoing problems with organic pollution so 
maybe more about that from River Flies, but but hopefully there'll be a follow up talk um, and and to sort of go into more detail about things. And then the extended River Fly is is a, a thirty three invertebrate groups that um, that are there to sort of uh, indicate different changes. Um, and the idea around this was it's a big pull out chart and it does have different sort of indicating scores but to but to get the chart itself without the scores on you can buy so you can buy that chart from the fba's website which i'll put a link to for 10 pound and you can take that out and you can just use it for pure interest but then if you are trained in riverfly um there's what you will get the score sheet that goes with it because obviously you know you'll be trained to be able to do the scoring system and there's lots of different things that um you know you've got everything on there from signal crayfish through to um you know invasive shrimp to all sorts of different stuff you know uh, mussels and bivalves and all sorts of different stuff so that's quite exciting so that uh train trainers are getting trained up to train people so train three times uh in july and then hopefully the different river fly groups will be getting trained up in the in the coming year so i've mentioned about some of the partners so um the, if you go on the river flies website um there's so much information on there which is great there's even actually some principal um principal posters on there actually of one of the things i showed which was the fly life cycle but there's also a big list of all of the different partners um uh, that are featured um within riverfly and there's been so many different organization organizations you know um men, many of them that sit on the um the advisory board and, and many of them just you know passionate about riverfly or um being involved with it used it for projects all sorts of different things so these are just um in alphabetical order you can see af and, and r but the list is massive so the, while the, the riverflies website it um, data section is currently not live because they've just had a brand new website built and they're still just um, fine tuning it. In the meantime, I'm going to share a different website in the chat, um, which is you can kind of explore some of the Riverfly data um, along with the EA invertebrate data and phosphate and nitrate data. And then another project called Freshwater Watch, which collects phosphate and nitrate um, around the world. And um, But this map is just focused on um on the uk and so i'll share this and, and what you can do is you can sort of zoom in and zoom out and um, there is a video at the beginning of the website as you as you open it and watch the video because it'll show you how to use it because it's it, you know it is a little bit technical but um at the same time it, it's not too you know it's meant to be for the public to use so it's not too overly complex um so this is the sort of screen that you'll expect to see and these different colored dots and then there's a key in the bottom left hand corner which explains what they are so you've got green triangles are river fly sites um i can't remember what the other what the other colored um shapes are but it does tell you in the bottom left hand corner and then when you've clicked on some of these points you can start you scroll down to the bottom of the screen and you can get a, a a rough idea of of what what's going on so you can see here the top the top graph um it, it says phosphate so you get in the um, EA and the freshwater watch phosphate levels for that site from 2010 to 2022 and then the bottom screen has got the invertebrate scores so you've got the blocks of uh, river flies and the dots are EA scores and these are it's giving you an overall sort of score what what's being scored here so it's getting you know scores of around about eight to 15 or something like that maybe a bit more and you can kind of then you know dig into this a bit more so the river flies website itself is a lot more um easy to use and a lot more in um sort of uh uh easy to visualize i think this is a little bit more your next step afterwards when you start to want to put water chemistry data with with invertebrate data so going back to the importance of of river flies and you know monitoring in general um i wanted to highlight some of the things what what river flies does without even meaning to do it so obviously we've, we've talked about fish and you know it's protecting fish from the early warning system and you know it it's just sort of there to help sort of um you know protect the future of of uh well you know uh, a lot of fish populations mainly like i said 
um, trout and um, and grayling, but you know it is focused on rivers, so it it does have an ability to sort of be broadened. Um, it was just designed to sort of be you know focusing on river flies that are obviously um, you know uh, with the sort of fly fishing sort of community in 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 the beginning. Um, it it definitely understands climate change. So as much as you know, we're starting to see some of the problems slowly coming in now with the random storm events and you know eroding um, channels and all sorts of different things that are being caused from climate change. You know, being out in the river and doing river fly monitoring helps you monitor um, that river and sort of and flag up some of these changes that we're going to see probably coming in a lot quicker now. Um, whereas a lot of people thought, you know. I might not live to see the, the problems from climate change, but we're already starting to see some serious problems um, coming in on, on rivers. So, you know, it could be that by doing river fly monitoring, you can start to sort of see those early, early problems. Um, things like even temperature, there was a real interesting um, talk by Craig McAdam, who's the um, conservation director of Bug Life Scotland. And they've sort of done, they've published um, a scientific paper on some of the river flies that are uh, anticipated to um, maybe struggle with range because of the warming temperatures um, and at risk. So that was really interesting. So, you know, you might see less invertebrates and less things for fish to eat because of increasing temperatures. Uh, pollution, you know, the, uh, I can't sort of sit here and sort of say that, um, you know, it's not it's a big problem and uh you know as much as we're sort of trying to sort of keep a um handle on it through uh you know river fly monitoring it, it's just sort of it's so widespread it would appear in, in many parts of the country that you know it's very difficult to sort of um to to keep um to, to keep monitoring but at the same time it's important that you know if everybody's sort of collectively getting involved in citizen science games then maybe you know maybe we can sort of maybe try and start, start to sort of flag up more things um invasive species so I've, I've i've put here a picture of um of uh one of the the demon and um the demon and the killer shrimp um, I try to can't remember actually which one it is now. So uh, you can see here that it's an identification guide from one of the uh, invasive species websites that I've put in the next slide. And I think that's something that we've sort of moved into where, you know, the river flies were set out to monitor just river flies for fish. But actually, you know, now it's sort of flagging up recording invasive species and the, the widespread of them. Um, or, you know, and how are they affecting catchments? I've spoke to a few anglers uh, this year, actually, at, uh, at a conference that were saying that all they're getting is, um, you know, the demon or the killer shrimp in their river and nothing else. Um, they've eaten all of, or they've killed all, you know, sort of wiped out all of the invertebrates. Um, reporting problems I've mentioned. So, you know, like I've said, river flies is there to pick up early warning signs, but if you're out at the river anyway, and you're out doing your river fly monitoring slash fishing, um, you know, why not just, if you see something or you smell it, just report it anyway. Um, and obviously, um, you know, it, hopefully it will sort of get picked up and there'll be a response to it. Um, and like I've mentioned, it's promoting um, good mental health. So, or, or physical health, you know, getting out and doing your kick sample and, and, and finding that drive to have to do that every every sort of couple of months or every quarter and getting out and keeping an eye on the river is good for definitely good for physical and mental health. So I wanted to mention about invasive species just because it's um, you know really important and it's really it's some really good resources out there. So I'll share a link to this in, in the chat. But um, yeah, you can definitely sort of um, learn how to identify these, but you can also, you know, use your your um, extended river fly chart as well to, and go on the training course for this but otherwise there's a lot of printable um, fact sheets to put up so you know printing these off and laminating them and putting them up around um, around your fishery or or sort of you know even if, if signal crayfish or whatever just to sort of tell people to keep it out if they do see something to report it if you've not got it so you've got everything from the swamp crayfish and um, 
some of the other different crayfish now that are turning up in in course fisheries and it's you know it's really important that if you can educate your sort of your your, your fishermen about some of the reasons why it's sort of important to flag some of these things up um you know it's definitely worth doing so i thought i'd add that in as, a, as an added bonus so i've talked a lot about fly fishing but it doesn't really sort of um it doesn't mean that you know that any any other anglers can't get involved i've said to you about the benefits and they're beyond just learning about you know the flight that the, the different flying insects that tend to be used by fly fishermen on um you know uh, as as bait but it sort of um well it's flies but uh, you know, it's sort of it's beyond that really. It's about sort of that understanding and engagement with the river, and sort of being able to understand what the fish are eating, um, and what's going on, and is there any problems with that? You know, so it's beyond. Um, and because it's focused on rivers, you know, if you're fishing on a river anyway, you know, you, you could be involved with this while also you know course fishing. It's not just for for fly fishermen, um, and a lot of the people who are involved with it these days tend to be. You know anybody from community groups through to you know people who are just interested in the rivers through to you know i mean i know a few people that don't fish that have been doing river flies for a couple of decades i'm pretty sure i mean i don't quote me on it but i think steve steve um, brooks who's the chairman i don't think he, he fishes um so you know getting trained up the easiest way to get trained up is to find out where your local group is so while the website's down the email is the easiest way but once the website um it is it is fully finished you can usually zoom in to find out what groups are near you and where people have been monitoring and that that way you can then ask to be put in touch with your local group but otherwise for now um try not bombard alex and trini with too many emails because i'm sure they'll uh, they might not uh, uh, thank me but there you know there's always room for more river fly volunteers and once you've done that training and um and you've got your certificate then you obviously you get put onto a site or you you sort of um develop a site and then you get out and start monitoring so what happens next so you've been trained up and you found your site and you joined your group um, there's a great example here from um, Pembrokeshire rivers trust of how to fill in the sheet and um and then you sort of yeah start recording you know you start to sort of record um you know either in uh the, the the spring and then the autumn or you you know you sort of might go out a bit more frequently but you've got to remember every time you go out you might be causing some sort of disturbance on the river um which could then lead to sort of uh you know it could lead to damage in the river so you have to really plan you know how frequently you're going to go out but you know understanding um spring and autumn is the sort of standard really for, for populations and maybe once in the summer so 2023 Riverfly has got lots of stuff going on. Um, I've mentioned about the extended scheme and the urban scheme. So they're both sort of slowly, urban scheme is on a slow rollout and then the extended scheme, trainers are getting trained and then um, they'll be training for volunteers next year. Um, there even is some groups being trained up this year that are a bit more sort of involved with the people who developed it. Um, and then the catchment monitoring cooperative I've mentioned, definitely go off and YouTube search working towards a catchment monitoring cooperative by Michelle Walker and watch that. And you can sort of work out where, where you know, citizen science might be sort of moving. And here's a quick uh, glimpse on the right hand side of, you know, what it sort of aims to achieve. And, um, you know, that sort of standardised methods and things like that. And Riverfly is part of that, which is great. So um, it's got a new website. It's got, already got a really good database. These are all sort of being migrated onto this new website, which I've shown a lot of clips of. And then hopefully in 2023, we'll have, they'll be having a conference as well. So additional training, it, wouldn't, it would definitely make sense to mention about some of the other places that you can sort of get involved and get trained in river flies. Um, so the Freshwater Biological Association, the FBA, they offer courses for entomology for anglers. Um, taught by some of the real, real experts out there. Um, you know, these people who've been doing it for decades, written books, excuse me, written books and all sorts of, um, of different things. So these are courses that are very, very popular. They, the Entomology for Anglers, it sells out, I think within the first couple of weeks, if not faster. So I'm pretty, it's all sold out for this year. 
So um, definitely keep your eye out if it's something that you're interested in. This is diff this is obviously different to river flies. It's more in depth. Um, I can't remember how many days it, it's on, if it's just one day or not, but it's it's definitely a very, very highly rated course. Um, the Royal Entomological Society Aquatic Insect Special Interest Group, it's a long-winded name. I am the new sort of um, coordinator for that. Craig McAdam has handed it down to me. And so I oversee that. And that's just um, for people who love aquatic insects and these conferences and training and all sorts of different stuff going on with that. Um, the biological recording. So if you're into just recording different creatures, you know, if you're out on the river and you like looking at butterflies and fish and all sorts of different things, and obviously biological recording is the way to go. Um, books galore. A lot of the things that I've learned all my material from. I'm pretty sure I've got an example here. <clears throat> so some of the books, they might be able to see it. Oh, is it a bit blurred? But um, yeah, the so that's one of the books, the Mayfly book. You can go on the FBA website and get all of the books on there. Um, and then local events and training. So, you know, finding out who your local groups are for a start. They might even be putting on you know, their own sort of workshops beyond Shield River Fly training. Um, things like, you know, Mersey Rivers Trust do River Guardians, which is um, a, a great scheme, which is about sort of um, learning lots of different skills and getting out on the river. So there might be things like that, but obviously involve maybe then learning river fly and things. Um, the, the FBA um, has all of the courses on the website. I'll share a link to that when I've stopped talking. And Aquatic Insects um, is the Royal Entomological Web, uh, Society website. And then you'll find me most years. I've been there last two years um, at the British Fly Fishing International um, down in Shropshire and uh, sorry, Shropshire is Staffordshire, sorry. And um, I, I'm there and talking to anglers about river flies. And um, we usually have sort of a, a tank there. Thank, thanks to Stuart Croft on the far right hand side. Um, and this is Simon in the middle, who's the um, the chief exec for the FBA. And uh, we're there trying to promote the benefits of, of why river flies is so important. Um, getting involved, I have mentioned about the website and the email. Uh, the location of the, the site for the river flies is at, is at the um, FBA, which is on Windermere, which I've mentioned. And all this information is on the website. So if you was thinking about going on any of them training courses, you'd be heading to, uh, to the beautiful um, uh, view of Lake Windermere. The River Flies are on Twitter, it's worth mentioning, and they're also on Facebook, because I know most people tend to use one of those, if not both. So feel free to check them out as well. And um, yeah, it, if you and if you're not sure, you can definitely get in, probably get in touch with um, River Flies and ask, or um, you might end up talking to me anyway, and, and I, hopefully I can help. So thank you, I'm gonna take a, a drink now. And, um, and stop talking. I see there's some questions that have come in as well. <clears throat>